program for the first time, they will be benefiting from my videos. Uh, so here, when I tell why you need to watch my video, because it is unique compared to any other videos, how it is unique. So here I have portrayed each and every concept diagrammatically. It's going to help out the students to grasp it in minimum time in that way so it will be useful for the students uh, now learning c language is not a difficult task it is like english language how we are going to learn english language like first we'll learn alphabets and we will learn words and then sentences finally we will write the paragraph similarly c program here we need to learn the alphabets we have to learn the c tokens and then we will write the statements and finally programming part so similarly we are going to write so in that way so come let us learn the c programming i have made it simple now let us uh, start with the language what do we mean by language so language is nothing but here we are going to communicate something to others via language for example i want to tell or I want to convey something to my friend, definitely uh, whatever I speak, he can understand at the same time, he is going to replay again, I can understand it. So this is possible with respect to human being. Now question arises whether machine can interact with the human being. Is it possible? No, it is very difficult. So in that way, so what we need to do, so definitely we need to translate our language into machine level language. Will machine understand our language? It's not possible. That's why how to translate our language into machine level language. Some translators we are going to use. So come quickly, let us see which are the different computer programming languages we are going to come across. Here, first thing, what we need to understand is what do we mean by programming? What is program? So program is nothing but why we need to do the program? Because whenever some problem arises to resolve it, we are going to code. So which language you are going to use? It all depends. Here, since we are speaking with respect to C language, we are going to use C language code. We will code it to simplify are to resolve the problem so that's what when i tell program it is nothing but set of instruction which performs specific task so that is nothing but program now there are three types of or uh, three levels of languages machine level language assembly level language high level language what is machine level language machine level language can easily understood by the hardware computer it can be easily understood and it is very efficient if we write the program using machine level language it is very efficient compared to any other language because no translation is required directly you can communicate with the hardware so now you might have understood why we required machine level language because if i want to communicate with the hardware we need a language that is machine level language how it looks like just you can check out an example here 1000111 binary digits using binary digits we are going to write a program using machine level language directly it can be understood by the hardware no difficulties with respect to hardware but difficulty arises with the users or programmers we cannot write the lengthy programs using binary digits it will be very difficult for us. So what we have done uh, over a period of time, so they developed a language called assembly level language. What is assembly level language? Assembly level language is made up of symbols and different keywords, different words. So we call it as a mnemonics. So here you can take an example, add A comma B. A is a variable, P is a variable, A will be having some value, B will be having some value. When B will be added, so it will be substituted to a variable called add. So
So this is how it works. So now, whether assembly level language can be understood by the hardware? No, it is not possible. So what we need to do, assembly level language has to be converted into machine level language. How it will be converted or translated? Assembly level language can be translated using assembler and then it will be in a form of machine level language. Now hardware can understand the machine level language. It means we need an assembler. So again, this is not that user friendly. It's a language of processor. So now next level, if I see high level language, high level language are nothing but it's a combination of words and symbols. So here, just you can take an we can take an example. We can see the example over here. Int a comma b. Int is nothing but a data type. A comma b. So as of now, it's a characters. But in C program, we call it as the variables. Again, here you can see sum is equal to a plus b. Any students who knows basic mathematical operation, he can analyze what exactly this statement is. That is nothing but sum is equal to a plus b. A will be having some value, B will be having some value because of arithmetical operator, both will be added to four and this assignment operator and it will be substituted to sum, assigned to sum. What sum is equal to A plus B. So it is easily understandable by the human being. Again, there's a difficulty. High level language cannot be understood by the hardware. So again, what has to be done? It has to be compiled. How it will be compiled in the sense how it will be translated using compiler. We will convert high level language into machine level language. This is the only one way. So in that way, we will convert high level language to machine level language. Now it can be easily understood by the hardware. So now what is C? C program is a high level language. It is a structured language and it has many operators, many useful operators. Using that, we can write the program efficiently and effectively. So it is widely used everywhere in the software industry. So now when I see, when I tell C, so who has introduced this one? Who developed this C programming? It is developed by Dennis Ritchie in 1972. So initially, there was a, a language called Algol, BPCL, and language called B. So he inherited many features from all these three languages, and he added a concept called data types to this language, and he came up with a name called C. This is how it evolved. So this is what the C language. I hope you understood the history of this one. So as I said, how high level language will be converted into low level language using compiler. Compilation will take place and high level language like C language will be compiled to the low level language. When I tell low level language, it is nothing but the machine level language. Here I am just a specifying, I have specified few IDE, just you can go through this code blocks, Visual Studio with C, Eclipse CDT, Code Light IDE. So these are the IDEs where you can write the program and you can execute it. So these are the few uh, different IDEs. Still, many more are there, just you can go through it. So now, one more very important concept in a C programming is keywords. So, keywords, what do you mean by keywords? In C programming, we can find many words. So few words we can take as variables and few words which has predefined meaning can be taken as keywords. Keywords are nothing but reserved words. So keywords will be having its own meaning like predefined meaning. Now let us go through this. Here I have mentioned 28 keywords, constant, continue, default, do, which will be used in while loop, double, it's a data type, else, used in a condition statement, enum, extern, like this. So these are the keywords uh, which uh, we come across in a C program. Here, you need to mind one thing. 
these keywords cannot be used as variable okay so because it will be having predefined meaning so now let us concentrate on a very important and significant uh, concept over here variables and constants what do you mean by variables and constants we know the general meaning again let us learn what is variables and constants using diagram here you can observe the numbers 1 to 12 and two hands that is hour hand and minute hand so how we are going to define variables and constants via this diagram when when i say minute hand and the hour hand over a period of time its position will change but do you think the position of 1 to 12 numbers will change definitely not so what conclusion we can draw from this diagram is so these are the two hands which will change its position over a period of time but the numbers will not change its position over a period of time so because of that we can call these hands as a constants sorry variables and these numbers we can take as a constants because hands will change over a period of time so because of that we can take it as a variable and the numbers it will not change its value or its position so because of that we can take it as a constant so then do it means with respect to c programming variables are nothing but during the execution of program variables value will change constant during the execution of the program the value of the constant will never change so uh, example just we can go through the example example a comma b comma sum so a b and sum are the variables here just i want to explain one thing whenever you come across variable please treat it as a empty boxes in empty boxes whatever you want just you can fill it and you can empty it whenever you want so in that way always imagine whenever uh, we are going to speak regarding variables as a you treat it as a empty boxes it will be easy to understand so now i'll explain in detail because variables are very significant in a programming you have to understand how exactly it works so let us go through each and every instance of the variable over here so just you can check out uh, how we explained in a fourth stage in a first stage you can see the size example and format specifier have given a is a variable as i said its value will change during the execution of the program here since i'm going to store a character called d so its size is one byte and compiler has to understand which type of data i will input so that's what percentage c it's a format specifier to input a character in a second case you can observe how stored value 20 so 20 is nothing but integer integer its size is two bytes and the format specifier which we use is percentage d for integer input so third case here i will input 8.5 decimal value and uh, the size of that uh, decimal value is and here the format specifier so to understand to make understand for the compiler percentage f and the last example here 8.555 so its size is 8 bytes so long floating point number percentage long floating point number this is the format specifier to input any long floating point or double we call it as a double so what you have observed from all these four cases variables in different program it will have different memory allocation and the value will change us okay so this is what the variables this is how you people can understand variables constant as i said constants are nothing but during execution of the program its value will never change pi equal to 3.14 
pi value always remains constant its value is 3.14 a is equal to 30 the value of 30 will never change but the value of a we can accommodate any value according to the requirement so here 30 is constant and a is a variable now very important uh, concept in a c programming is data types already we just discussed these data types one more time here i have mentioned four data types first one is character second one is integer third one is float fourth one is double these are the four main data types which we find in a c program first one character See, when i tell character its size is one byte it means all the characters like a b c d something like that like uh, capital letters and the small letters can can be good for a cat so its size will be one byte integer both positive and negative numbers can be given as a input uh, it will be stored in a memory its size will be two bytes float when i declare a variable as a float i can give decimal point as an input its size is four bytes and finally the double it's a data type uh, its size is eight bytes it is nothing but long floating point number can be represented using double so these are the four data types so as we progress you will understand how exactly we can use these four data types in a program data types as i said are nothing but the type of data which we are going to store in a memory and definitely how much uh, uh, space our memory will be allocated we need to think about that so just here in one first example int a int a a is a variable int is a data type when i tell a is a, a is belongs to or associated with the integer its size will be two bytes we checked it already float b b is a uh, variable float is a data type b is associated with float data type its size is four bytes of space character c c is a variable character is a data type and its size is one byte so when we include this integer float or character when we declare we call it as declaration when we declare a variable as an integer it means it sends a message to the compiler so memory like two bytes of memory has to be allocated okay so when i tell float four bytes of memory has to be allocated when i tell character compiler will understand one byte of space can be allocated now structure of a c program here just you can observe these are the common things which we are going to use in each and every program whichever we are going to write first one is preprocessor directive here the source program will be made uh, ready for compilation that is what the preprocessor directive example for preprocessor directive just you can check out here ash include stdio.h include standard input output dot header file so here the content of the file will be included in the beginning of the program that's why ash include stdio.h input output dot h void main so it is called as uh, calling function calling function in a program it calls other function to perform their task void main here flower brace for flower brace which we call flower brace or curly brace it is nothing but start of the program here also the same thing and then statements what are the statements pertaining to the example or the program so just statements has to be included here just print f c when academy how we are going to write this print f small bracket double quotes the content which you need to print again it has to be end by the double quote close the the uh, this one bracket and this is called a semicolon and finally again one more flower brace or curly brace it means end of the program this is these are the different contents or parts of the program 
structure of a C program. Again, here this gives the complete idea or picture about the structure of a C program. Preprocessor directives, as I said, preprocessor directive and the wide main. Wide main is a calling function, flower, flower brace or curly brace, local declaration, and these are the statements. And here, this is the curly brace where it ends the program. I hope you understood the structure of C program. Now, format specifier. What do you mean by format specifier? As I told, so whatever the data we are going to input and whatever the data we are going to store in a memory, it has to be understood by the compiler, is not? Yes. So how it can be understood by the compiler? So here we will use some format specifier. Format specifier is nothing but in which format you are going to input the data or store the data in a memory. When I tell character, how the compiler will understand I'm going to input the data as a character by percentage C. Each size we know that it is one byte. And string, how it can understand by percentages. This is called as format specifier. So size, it depends on the number of characters. Int, percentage D. So when I tell percentage, the compiler can understand I'm going to input as a user, I'm going to input integer values into the memory. Size will be two bytes, already we have discussed. Float, percentage F, size four bytes. Double, percentage long floating point number, that is long floating point number LF, size eight bytes. So this is how compiler can understand so which type of data we are going to input or store in the memory. Because of that, we call this as a format specifier. Now, very important concept, address operator. So why it is required? If I tell any one of you to search Rohan's house, how you are going to search, is it possible no, I need to provide you the address, right? If I provide you the address, number 25, MG Road, Kanakapura, and it is situated in Karnataka. If I tell that, definitely you can, Aram say you can search the house. But if I don't give address, surely it is not possible from your side to search that home or house, right? Isn't it? Yes. Similarly, we will declare a variable like A, B, C, we'll declare a variable, we'll store the value where it is going to store. If I don't append address operator, where exactly it's going to store in a memory, it is very difficult for compiler to locate it. So what we can do, we can append the address operator, we call it as a ampersand. When we append address operator, address of A, A, Two will be stored where exactly it is stored in an address called 101 in a memory when i append address of b value 4 will be stored in a variable called b in 102 address of c value stored in c is 6 where it is stored it is stored in 103 so this is what the address if you include a b c in a printf statement it's going to print 246 value of the variable if you include address operator for all the variables so it will gives the address it's going to print the address so because of that we always whenever we are going to write a c program and when we write the scanf statement so there we need to include or append address operator to the variable so this is what the rule we have to do is now, one more concept, input and output functions. So in a program, what exactly we'll be doing? We'll give some input to the program and we need to get a desired output. Desired output. One good example for that, if I want to add two numbers, assuming two plus two, I will give input as two numbers, two and two. Finally, what I'm expecting I am expecting 2 plus 2 has to be added and finally I should get a number called 4, right? So now we'll discuss what is input and output. Just you can see a tab over here. 
water is falling inside a tank when it falls from the tap this will be input to the tank input to the tank if when water fills the tank if i'm going to uh, make it flow out of the tank so then it will be the output okay let us learn it input and output function input function we call it as a scan f in a c program please try to understand and remember whenever i need to input to the program whenever i need to store some numbers into the variables always i'll use a function called scan f function we call it as a function because it performs its own task because it will accepts the number from the user and it stores in a memory how let us see scan f same small bracket has to be opened and uh, double quotes percentage d because it means this is a format specifier i am going to input one integer number one integer number i need to end with the double quote comma this is the syntax which you need to remember every time address of a because whatever the value i'm going to store one value called integer that has to be stored in a variable called a so where i'm going to store in a memory with the help of address operator it generates the address for a similarly scan f percentage f double quote comma address of a and semicolon here you can see the format specifier we are going to input integer and in this case we are going to input the decimal point number similarly so since it takes the number and it's going to store it's going to store in a variable we are going it, it's going to accept the number it's going to store in a variable called a here it accepts the number it's going to store in a variable called a address operator it generates address again it generates address it has stored now we have stored the water in the tank we need to remove it from the tank how we need to display the value out of a there is a function called printf again open brace and close brace always we call it as a function even this printf function will perform its own task how what type of task this is going to perform printf it's going to print a value from a variable called a again we have to give the format specifier whenever you are going to input a number whenever you are going to print a number in which format you are going to print percentage the integer format and where the value is stored in a variable called a so because of that we have to specify percentage d comma a here address operator should not be appended if you append address operator it's going to print address of a not the value stored in a again here print f percentage f comma a here we are going to print decimal point number which is stored in a variable a only one number so only one format specifier i hope you people understood input function which is called as scanf output function which we call it as a printf so now i need to ask one question where exactly the definition of scanf and printf will be stored how we are going to invoke it so that's what ash include stdio.h here just you can this is the first program where i can explain where exactly the printf and scanf will be called from so this is the ash include stdio.h standard input output dot header file here what the a preprocessor we call it as a preprocessor directive it includes the standard input output dot h file before the beginning of the program okay so input output input is nothing but scanf it is related to scanf output is related to printf void main void main is a calling function as already i explained it calls other function to perform its task so now in this program what exactly will be doing first we need to understand what is the problem definition with respect to this program problem definition is we will input two numbers that will be integer numbers and we are going to print the same numbers whenever i need to 
input two numbers two integer numbers how many variables i need to declare only two variables two variables so you can declare any variables it need not be a comma b it might be c d any words also just you can use here this is called as declaration step okay declaration section int a comma b it means i'm going to store two values here as soon as we declare int a comma b reserved the space will be reserved a the size of a is two bytes the size of b is two bytes totally four bytes of space will be allocated in the memory this means it will be reserved in the memory so now printf this is for our reference so to input the value this printf just it prints the statement enter the value of variables a and b so how we will write the printf already we have discussed printf all the c c programming is case sensitive so because of that everything should be in a small case only printf printf small cases open the brace double quote enter the value of variable a and b here whatever you are going to include so the same thing will be printed so close it by the double quote close by the bracket and semicolon we call it as a semicolon so now how many values we need to input two values so because of that whenever we need to input some value input some value scanf function has to be used so just imagine that water tank example so there tap will uh, from tap water will falls into the tank it means input so how many inputs we are going to give two values so because of that two percentage d which type of uh, value you are going to input it is integer type so percentage d percentage d within double quotes comma address of a comma address of b because we have declared variables as a comma b and here you know that why we need to append address operator to a comma address operator b and close the bracket and semicolon after this again our agenda of this program is you need to print two numbers we have stored numbers in a variable called a and b here we are going to print the same numbers it has been stored so now print f bracket open double quote entered values are equal to percentage d percentage d in the sense i'm going to print two values two integer values so because of that percentage d and percentage d again it has to be closed with the double quote comma a comma b where the values are exactly stored in two variables a and b small bracket has to be closed terminate it with a semicolon and curly brace it is the end of the program it means here we have input two values here we are going to print two values because of that we have included scanf and printf statement we will see the result here enter the value of variables a and b so this was in a printf so i will give input as 12 comma 20 through keyboard i will input the values so now this is the output entered values are equal to 12 comma 20 so this is how it's going to print this is what the output we are going to get from the program let us see one more program here the program statement is we need to find some